Hi, welcome to my channel, Budget Audio Review. Now, I do apologise for the low level lighting. Hopefully, you can still see me, or maybe uh, beneficial that you actually don't. But anyway, and the noise also in the background is my PC fan that seems to be uh, always on fairly loud. So, I do apologise for that, but this is the only space I can do the recording in at the moment. Today, I'll be talking about noisy transistors, not noisy fans, but noisy transistors, uh, and me replacing a noisy transistor in this uh, Sharp 3151 cassette deck. But this noisy transistor could be anything. It could be in an amplifier, it could be in a radio receiver, it could, could be in pretty much anything really. Uh, I'm just going to show me fault finding this particular one in this unit. Now this is a pretty common transistor to go noisy. Uh, just off the top of the head and looking at the screen over there, it's a 2SC458. Uh, and it can be 458C, 458D, it's got a few different prefixes at the end and uh, this was made by Atarchi and it's uh, quite a well known transistor to go noisy, stroke 40, open circuit, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, as soon as I uh, looked at the circuit diagram for this particular unit, knowing obviously it's got a bit of noise on one of the channels, I see this transistor is in there and of course, knowing it's a you know, a common, quite a common transistor to go 40, you're kind of going to own him straight away on replacing that transistor and that's exactly what I did here but I'm just going to show you me going through the circuit diagram as well uh, how you would probably come to the same conclusion anyway. Now I bought this second hand, uh, still still needs a little bit of tinkering around to, to be honest with you but it doesn't sound so bad now but uh, one of the channels through the headphones I could hear when I was you know, press play and record uh, on a quiet passage I could hear one of the uh, channels be noisy, quite noisy, and obviously that noise is going to get transferred onto the tape. So when you play it back, the tape is actually going to be noisy. Now, where did I know it was actually the recall part of this unit causing the problems and not the playback? Well, what I did is I put a tape in, uh, just pretend really, it doesn't matter what tape, just press play, but then the pause button. So obviously nothing was coming from the tape itself, but the actual playback head would be kind of engaged in the circuit, would be connected in the circuit, going through the headphone amplifier or even the output on the line out at the back. That would be all connected up, ready for me just to release the uh, pause button and it would instantly play. So that was all lined up. So the maximum volume on here and the noise, just a little bit of this, which you know, just a little bit of background noise that you're gonna expect anyway. So I'm gonna let you listen to that now and uh, make your own conclusion. Okay, I'm gonna try and determine if that noise is coming from the playback side or the record side of this unit. Uh, I've played this unit back through speakers etc and I must admit I haven't really noticed that noise but uh, you're going to notice it more obviously on uh, in between tracks when there's a silent part of the tape going through and we can stimulate that rather than waiting for a silent part we can just press play with the pulse button down so uh, the actual play circuit now is being engaged uh, and all we have to do is just let go of that pulse and obviously the music will start up so the head's engaged it's you know it's kind of connected to the little amplifier inside to so the preamp etc inside and that's obviously connected to the headphone socket as well as the uh, audio out through the RCA stroke phono sockets at the back so uh, what I'm going to do is let you listen to it now coming through the headphones I've turned the output fully up to number 10 that's as high as it goes and you're going to hear just a little bit of this this is you know, just a, a very small amount of this even though the tape ain't going around this is kind of like a, it's going to pick this up anyway but it's, it's an acceptable level So the noise wasn't apparent in the playback. So what I did now is do record. So what I did for record, I pressed put the tape in there, play and record, but with the pause button down as well. First of all, I tried the microphone just to eliminate them. If it was on the microphone input, I want to know if it was that, or the line input at the back. So I plugged in the microphone, no apparent noise on record. So I then took the microphone out. This engages the phono or the line in at the back. Nothing connected at the back at all, just as they are, no connection whatsoever listen to it and there the noise come up on the right hand channel so uh, I'm going to let you listen to that right hand channel noise now so what I'm going to do now is stimulate recording now just to let you know what's actually happening here I've got record levels on left and right on number five about halfway it's no need to put them fully up because that noise is probably going to creep in with them even on zero uh, so we've got them both at number five I've got my output level uh, maximum here to my headphones so I'm going to let you listen to what's coming through the headphones. I'm going to press pause so the tape's not moving at all and play and recall. Now I've got nothing connected into the back. So when doing this, 
there should be absolutely nothing coming through the headphone socket you know if I turn these fully on you may just get a slight little bit of hiss that's a, that's about it where it's just picking that up but so uh, yeah if we press play and record now I'm going to give you a feed of uh, what this actually sounds like So now I know it's on the record part of the unit and it's on the right hand channel so the uh, next thing would be to do would be to download the uh, service manual for it, get the circuit diagram up and follow the circuit diagram and try and work out maybe where this noise is coming from. Now this noise, it's going to be a bit of a nuisance, it's coming through when you, you know, you come through your headphones while you're monitoring your recording and this is probably getting transferred onto the cassette as well so you know on the low passages this will stick out and obviously you don't want that little bit of noise on the track anyway because it's just you know it's not going to give the full quality of the track you're just going to have that little bit of noise getting in the way so we want to eliminate that so uh, let's have a little look at the circuit diagram and me you know walking you through it how uh, I figured out that it's you know what transistors to change first uh, but full well knowing that uh, the transistors in this are problematic anyway first of all I do apologize for the noise sounds like a washing machine a noisy transistor but it isn't it's my PC fan and for some reason it kind of sticks itself on full speed or near enough all the time so that's the noise you can hear rattling around in the background hopefully you're still picking my voice up now I'm going to use my old chopstick here uh, to show you uh, whereabouts in this diagram I'm looking at and uh, anyone asks this is just a, a, a normal chopstick nothing special about that at all okay so we've got the uh, right channel is the faulty channel and uh, we're going to follow the right channel anywhere on the line input because it's not making the noise on the mic it's just making it on the line input so we follow the line input here comes to a variable resistor here then goes down here along down here through a resistor uh, through a capacitor and to transistor 201 201 Q201 now this is a problematic transistor uh, if we just scroll this down just a little bit hopefully uh, where we go um, a bit too far here but as it says here uh, it tells you the, uh, what transistors are what here and this is Q201 find it again and this is a 2SC458D uh, Q201 transistor 201 202 and 203 on the right hand channel are them transistors so if we just go forward a little bit more on this circuit actually just want to show you the others here's transistor 202 and 203 don't forget this is on the right hand channel on the left hand channel there 101 102 and 103 these are problematic transistors so it's a good place to start so we just go back on the circuit again and as we can see the input comes back in comes in through that very resistor along this line here follow the circuit down through that resistor there and finally to the input of this uh, transistor here q201 so this is the transistor we're first going to replace this one here got a good idea it's going to be this transistor so this is the one we're going to replace so now I found out this transistor this 2SC458 is the first transistor on that line input we're going to replace it and uh, we don't want to put the same one back in now uh, so we're going to get an equivalent transistor and the equivalent is a 2SC2240 uh, exactly the same pinouts uh, exactly the same way round we're going to put this transistor back on the board so let's just have a a little look at the picture of the board where this transistor actually resides so I'm just going to show you a very quick video of me just uh, unsoldering that transistor and putting the new transistor in its place right I'm just going to uh, two oh ones here quite easy to see so just a bit of solder braid and we're gonna hopefully suck up that solder and that transistor should just pretty much fall out make sure that's it that should just, there you go, it's nice and loose now I don't want to fall through for some reason so oh yeah, a couple of pins have fell through, maybe just this pin here holding it back. Maybe just get a bit of salt on the pin, there you go, and it's fell through. So we're going to dig it out around the other side. I can't 
can't quite feel it, it may have actually fell out on the floor. Oh, there it is, it's actually fell out on the floor. There you go, that's why I couldn't feel it. So, there's uh, that transistor out, and we're going to have a little look at that. Okay, so now we're going to solder that transistor back in place. This is a new transistor. There you go, so that's soldered, and we're just going to cut the axis leads off. Just keep them hold them so they're away from the unit in case you drop in the unit and never find them again. So that's it, so we'll give that a little try out and see if that's done the trick or not. So now that transistor's back in its place, let's listen to recording now with the play, record and pause button down exactly the same as what it was before when we were doing that uh, noise coming through the right hand channel. Now we're going to listen to it again with that uh, transistor being replaced. Okay, so the transistor has been replaced. I've just replaced that one at the moment and uh, what we're going to do is exactly the same thing. We're going to put it on pause and we're going to do plan record and we're going to turn our input up. We're going to turn it right away now. It doesn't really matter. I'll put it where it was to make it all fair. It's only this knob here by the way. It just, it just left and right on the line. I think I had this one over here as well. But I'll put it there anyway, but it's cut off because uh, not unless you plug the microphones in will this actually come into play. So it's just this one here. But so we'll put it as it was, so it's all fair, exactly the same, just in case you think I'm fiddling about with anything or anything like that. And we're going to take a reading uh, from the output now of the phones. So uh, let's listen to that reading. So as you can hear, that sounds nice now. We've got rid of that noise, which is great. Now we could just stop there. I think we've done a great job. You know, that's fine. I'm happy with that. But uh, if we just want to make sure it's back to where it should be. We want to level up that right hand channel back to where the left hand channel input record would be because that transistor would have a slight different gain, it would maybe have more of a gain or maybe less of a gain than that uh, transistor we just replaced. Now we know the left hand channel is fine so we're going to take that as a guide. So we're not going to touch the left hand channel, we're just going to adjust the right hand channel uh, input uh, record level. Now obviously it's got an input record level at the front here but uh, there's actually a preset. So when this is both, you know, both lined up, it's got a left and right on this. So when they're both left and right are dead lined up and you start moving it around to say number three or four, we want it that the recording meters and the recording level inside the unit is exactly the same. We don't want the right hand channel being higher or lower than the left hand channel. So is a resistor inside for the right hand channel, it's a variable resistor 202. And we're going to adjust that now by putting a test tone into the unit via the back, by the input at the back the line input, the RCA inputs at the back. I'm just going to use a normal CD player, uh, which is laying about here, there you go. I've just got a test tone on here. Uh, I think it's a one or two kilohertz test tone. You can download them off the internet, burn on the CD, headphone output, uh, or line output of the unit into the back here, play the test tone. We're just going to level this round until one of the meters are in a certain position, and we're going to adjust that variable resistor 202 so the right hand channel is exactly the same. So there's a little video of me recapping that again. Okay, first of all, any noise you can hear in the background is my uh, computer running while I'm talking here. That's my computer. The fan's a little bit loud on that. Now, uh, playing that back, as you could hear, there was no noise. That noise has been eliminated now. We solved the problem by replacing that one transistor. And it's a good idea to do uh, all the transistors there are problematic. They're going to be problematic in the future. Good idea maybe to go along and replace them on both channels. But if you want to stop there, you may be thinking, well, I've done that. That's, that's secured it. I'm very happy with that. That's fair enough. Just one last thing we've got to do is uh, replacing that transistor. The uh, gain on that transistor will be slightly different, either more or less than the transistor we just replaced. So we just want to adjust the input levels so they're exactly the same when we come to recall. We don't want one input level higher than the other. Now, variable resistor 202 does the right channel here. This is the channel we change. No need to change the left because that's where it is and that should be fine. So we're going to you know, just match up the right channel to the left channel now. So with our recall knob, we're going to put that so they're both level kind of thing because it's a left and right. It's a twin knob here, left and right. The left is in the middle, I think. Um, so no, the left is on the outer and the right's in the middle. So we want it. So as we turn this, say on number three, they're both on number three. We're going to press play and record with the pause button down. We're going to have a test tone going in. You don't need a signal generator or anything like that. Uh, just normal CD player. Burn a, a track on there. There's plenty of them about on the internet. Uh, one or two kilohertz tone, five kilohertz tone, something like that. And just press play on this uh, CD player. So we we'll press play, and in a second the CD will load up, and we'll see both meters there. Now, if we look at both meters, I've got the sound coming out of here. You can probably hear that there as well. 
just so I can hear it, but I don't really need to hear it. So what I'm going to do is uh, adjust so both of these meters are dead level. So uh, if I just move this slightly to bring out, it's on number one there now, this uh, left hand side. We want to get the right hand side to number one as well. So we're going to put the screwdriver in, be very careful if you've got the unit on. Take your time, be careful you don't short anything out or anything like that. Be very, very careful. But I'm going to show you a picture of variable resistor 202. And that's the resistor that I'm going to start turning any second now. I'm just going to jump up. I'm going to put my glasses on because I need them for this kind of work. And I don't want to short anything out myself. So there we go. My screwdriver's in there. And I'm going to adjust that right-hand side meter. Oh, gone the wrong way. Just so it's number one as well. And there you go we're pretty much matched up there you could spend a little bit more time than i have but uh, yeah they look fine to me just bouncing around on the number one so both of them are nice and level now so when we move this up they will both perfectly match across the dial so there you go that's the input level balanced up as well okay so uh, that's it it's all fixed you may just want to stop at one transistor uh, you're quite happy with that you're not going to bother changing the rest of them but it's a good idea uh, maybe to change, you know, the forty transistors. You know, that could be problematic. Uh, this would be Q one hundred one, one hundred two, one hundred three on the left hand channel of this unit, and Q two hundred one, two hundred two, and two hundred three on the right hand side of this unit. So it's a good idea, maybe, to replace all of them, and you know that they're not going to be problematic anymore. Now, that's just for this unit here. Now, you may have an amplifier or receiver that's, uh, you know, got different transistors. It's always best to have a look to see. You know what kind of transistors are in your unit that are problematic you know if you buy an amplifier it suddenly goes noisy on one channel get the circuit diagram find out the parts in there transistor wires and type them in on the internet and see if many of them come up as a problematic transistor uh, if they do then it's a good place maybe to start you know it, it could be something else but it, it, it's quite highly likely that uh, it could be a transistor so um, you know just something to bear in mind if you kind of get in a noisy channel or something like that or even if you're looking, you know, this is for your own personal equipment you've already got, or even if you're looking for buy something, you may be able to find something a little bit cheaper. Uh, for instance, this cassette deck where a bloke's advertised it as working, but he's sending it for parts only because uh, one of the channels is noisy. It may not be this particular one, but it could be another cassette deck of Technics or something like that. You could quickly go and find out the model number, look at you know, what model number is uh, advertising for sale, download the manual, flip through the manual, and see if you can find any noisy or problematic transistors in that unit and I'm not saying it's definitely going to be that but it's you know it's a possibility it's a strong possibility uh, and you may think well I can get that a lot cheaper maybe I should buy that and uh, have a little look see if I can repair it something like that just an idea really okay so that's me fixing this uh, 3151 with a noisy transistor hope you got something out of this video until the next one I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon